It's how you use it. Game number two, Welcome Echo versus Team Hawk. Let's see where these junglers start. It's an orange start for Echo, while Team Hawk goes for the purple. Well, once again, right, I, I actually do agree with you, Dave. I feel like it is a skill matchup here, especially in the Rome uh, department, with the Cho and the Kufra. Sure, Kufra has that bouncing ball, can actually negate a lot of these dashes from happening, but with the shampoo, it does give him, oh, here, Min, a lot of room to play with, right? I think right now, if we just look at it based on the drafts, who do you guys have? Who do you guys think has the better draft? I mean, I, I don't know, actually, because yeah, the exactly, draft is right? so out of the traditionary. You got Moscow, Vidora being picked in the exact same game. We thought this M4, this is a ranked game taking onto the big stage. Yep, it's basically something that I saw yesterday. It's like, how is this happening here right now? Oh! oh. Yaoi catches one. Panda's gonna be brought low here, has that Inspire, pops it in, actually trading better here, winning it out. Fanny's gonna be taken low there, and just like that, Panda is gonna win. Is this a, a, a counter, perhaps? A shadow counter towards the carry? When you're able to trade better almost every single time. Again, I think of all the uh, aspects brought up about the Moscov, it's the displacement that's gonna throw most people exactly. off. The fact that you're as you're assuming that I'm gonna go into this fight from this point, and then he just throws you off it by what? A few meters in game? That's a main oh. difference dealer, look at this. Here we go. Lover boy cancels it. They don't opt to go for it, right? A bit too risky Ooh. here, especially considering that Min was body blocking for Panda. You just don't know when he's gonna use the Shun Poo, but you do know when Gary is gonna start popping off. It's when he gets that level four, but right now, he does not have the purple buff, so he is still gonna be waiting for that to spawn back up before he looks for these crazy dives and ganks. Another thing that is why this game is so enjoyable to watch is how disciplined the team are. Just now on the bottom side, Akko with three versus two. Kurfa, Yaoi could have engaged and find a play for a team fight, but they didn't know where Fanny was. They didn't know where Gary was, so they decided to take a step back. What if we engage and, you know, Fanny just show up after I use my bouncing ball? Whoa. Oh, top side! Lola picked off a good gank by Sanji with better wave control. No, he just ignores the wave. That's what they were saying. The fact that if you don't know where dudes are, you don't know where these heroes are hiding, there's barely any difference between a Eudora and a Kadita. Yeah, they're just camping. It's a camping game, right? Who camps better? And a lot of the mid laners, they like to wait one wave ahead of you coming to the lane. They have to go there one wave earlier. Or if the least, you expect them to show up. Sometimes you, yeah, you expect the mid lane to clear the wave and then show up, but no, they show up earlier. With this composition, though, it does put Team Hawk in a position where they really need to get that early game. And as you can see, the early game right now is just dominated by Echo again. Despite having these early picks, Team Hawk are still struggling early on. Two kills over to Echo. Deja vu. And so far, uh, it's an interesting approach with top lane. They eventually find one. It's Sanford, gets popped by three. And I was gonna say, game one, they had the whole Hilda plan, right? That helped them scale into the mid-game power spike. Here, we, we agreed that in the draft, they have the snowball. Where's that potential gonna come from? I think they have to do more than just that one pickoff. Can Yaoi catch him? Oh, cancels it. Cancels it, right? Team Hawk playing around the XP lane really well, and Echo noticed that. They went towards the bottom lane, but now oh. the bottom charge. Sanford's gonna be able to actually buy some time, and that's gonna be the wall. Locking them down. Still Gary oh. with a kill, picking up the kill with Lola's passive. Top lane tier one, still very, very low as Carl TZ looks to get a kill back. Not gonna be able to get in range, but Sanji's here. Gary able to sidestep and he uses the cables to get out. Oh. One HP, oh. Gary gets out. Oh my god, bottom side though, another engage coming from Team Hawk and they're trying to tr uh, get oh. more gold right now. Good way to Dragon too, technically. Yeah, he was looking for a pick there. But again, I do believe Team Hawk, they just come out with the advantage. Never mind, Echo finds a way to trade it back. <laughs> just as quickly, right? Never mind. Uh, I think it's eyes on the prize. Uh, you have to consider that when Echo makes moves, they're also thinking of the clapback, or at least the conversion potential. And so far, the fact that they've got 100% of the turtles and they have a 1k uh, gold lead, means good things for the Filipino team. Yeah, absolutely. Now it's main on the run. He is Chow. I said the love and hate relationship is based on who runs or who engaged first, but he, it turned out he will get caught off by the rotation from Sanford. 
Whoa, that's a lot of resources spent, right, to get the kill yeah. on a Romer, who's now 0 2 and 0. So, Min, so far in the show, having a pretty similar start to last game, but Basket oh. Panda actually getting out. Yaoi looking for that kill. Panda actually helps him out there, gets him out of turret. You have to consider as well, though, the fact that, yes, they spent all those ults to kill a Romer early on in the game. It's also a way for a at least to make sure that Min doesn't help out Panda. And again, it slows down the snowball potential for this monster. I mean, a lot of times it's really hard for Min to help because he's almost like the most focused person in this match right now. Because the Hilda last game, you see how many people were on him the entire game. Yep. This game, his Chao's getting the Hilda treatment, right? Like everybody's focused on him. Even the EXP lane find a better rotation to the mid lane. And another that, he's also trying to do vision for Team Go. And T was about to walk into that bush. Oh man, Echo just hate Min, right? But <laughs> Min right now is doing pretty well. Uh, and towards that bottom side, Gary's gonna be able to try Ooh. to look for something. That's a flicker, Sanford hitting the wall. Lola jumping with Black Dragon form. Sanji still trying to run away, but Lola's deciding to actually dive in. What the three finds the kill, but he can be traded back. Back. Who side. is it worth for? We'll see as Team Hop look for more in the gold lane. Yaoi just takes a chunk of HP. Gary did not get the purple buff. That's him killing oh. gold. Easy who steals it away and finds a kill. It's the appraiser's wrath. Man gets a stun. Carl TZ not able to look for more. And I gotta say, at this point, I wanna take a look at uh, items from Team Echo. They probably have a lot of Venus Shield just for Yora to make sure he doesn't do the burst. Because you can see how tanky Fredrin really is on Power TD. Yudora ascending a skill one, it feels like he was healing more HP than being damaged. At than, this point. Being, than hitting, right? But look at this item pickup from Sanford. See, Halberd? Oh. Oh, he's trying to stop the shenanigans from Lola and maybe even potentially Panda, right? We talked about how that lifesteal into the mid to the late game might make a difference between the Moscow and the carry. I like that Sea Halberd pickup. Yeah. With the Sea Halberd, you do have, I guess, more utility play around, right? Yeah. But right now, it oh. just feels like Team Hop are putting most of their resources to get the Moskov ahead. Lola up top is going to get ganked constantly. He's still able to play the weak side of the map really well. He's actually going to oh, be able to go. try to turn it around with a Petrify caught oh. in. Gary finds a kill despite having no purple buff. It's still, right now, Lola and Sanford going at it. But with that sustainable, sustainable ability, Lola is going to be able to actually get out of that one. First turret for Team Hawk. You know, I got to give a credit and also it's just a little bit thing about what Team Hawk's doing. There are 3v2 trying to push a bottom tier one tower. And he's oh! failing every step. Oh, here it comes. That's the way the dragon do. That's going to be stunned as well. Panda's still going to be able to try to dish out oh! the damage. Caught in one. Yaoi and Panda surviving. Just barely. But Benny now still with full HP will mean that they will still have more pressure in the gold lane. Or was it just me holding my breath? I think that was everybody, right? That's gotta be everybody. Look at the lover boy. Here we go. Yeah, we have the Tyrant's Revenge and the Rage. Benny gonna be able to actually dish out some damage, but that's gonna be the stun oh. coming in. Not enough. Gary coming in, looking for the damage. Benny. Imagine that, whoa! A double kill for Benny, but a double kill back for Gary. He gets out with the cables, but Sanford and Sanji are oh. here! The flicker of the wild card! And water to smack him around. That's a shutdown for Echo. And that's why Grok is so good in the side lane right now. The ultimate wild charge into the flicker. The least expected engage. You don't see it coming like, oh, this is going to miss. But little did you know, no, you're going you're gonna to go back to the black and white screen. Yep, that was what, a two or three step process that eventually lead to Echo getting a 2k lead, right? That was, what, miles away that they planned? We didn't even think about it. We could have sworn that Team Hawk was ahead, but look at the conversion. They pushed down bottom. They're trying to make a way up top. Mid lane oh. though, standing still. I think this is where the difference uh, has to be made because these mid laners, they've always been rotating the side lanes. Here we go. Yaoi and Sanji oh. under the tier one. Man's gonna be taken down. And just like that, once again, it's Echo who have the man advantage. Lola trying to find just a pick here, but Carl is way too tanky. Gonna be able to sustain back up. Sanji looking for a position to flank, but for Team Hawk, they're just Panda. here. It's going to be Sanji who jumps in. He pops the fetch fight a bit too early, and that's going to be Min running back. That's Gary oh. caught. Yaoi the bouncing ball, stopping oh. the dashes. Benny picking up a kill. Min going to be taking low as Benny free hits once again. Called easy, traded back in. Lola and Panda running for the hills. It's a double kill for Benny. That's the wall. Panda. Lock Panda down. 
Benny with a triple! Benny oh, blows with the Maniac! Lola jumping out, but it's still again Benny who's looking for it! Oh. Yeah, he jumps in! Takes the kill away! But it's gonna be a Maniac for Benny! It's a wipeout! Five down, traded for Carl TZ. Echo is swimming in value, almost 3k ahead, steals away that purple buff, pushes in mid. Oh, Dave, oh. I gotta ask you, where, where's Echo going with this? I mean, a lot of highlights that came into the Benny, but I gotta give credit to Yaoi here. Those engages onto Fanny, onto everyone else, and sinking with Sanji to follow up the one shot rough wave combo is absolutely insane. You can see Benny has so much room to do free damage that entire team fight, the whole time just dashing, auto attacking. It, he didn't need any peel because everybody else is getting killed by the middle lane by Sanji and Yaoi combo. So ban carry? Maybe. I mean, that seems to be the logical choice. Let's look at the items. What's uh, going on here? That's uh, Wind of Nature already. So more likely, Benny's going to win duels against a panda. Uh, what's panda rocking? It is purely damage still. So not much utility on the Moskov yet. Absolutely. Going for straight damage. And see, Moskov doesn't have to go for carry one-on-one. -on -one. He penetrates, right? It's Bro. all about those penetration. He goes through your front line and kills your back line at the same time. But here we go, the lore fight is about to happen. Lola with Black Dragon form once again, just looking for an opening right now. And that's gonna be actually Min jumping in with onto Santi, who has the damage, who jumps in again. Yeah, we're gonna be able to find the Lord right there with Call TZ, oh. securing it. Mon's gonna fall. That's a double kill for Sanford right now. And again, Sanford's going wild. Panda's in a 1v1. He gets the stun down, but he's all alone. Panda. It's gonna be the chase from oh, Echo. Panda. The breath oh. of the ocean finds oh. it. He gets knocked up. And you can say goodbye to Panda. 4 to 0. Echo with a 5.6k gold lead. Now a 6k gold lead. Min's the only one left standing. Echo just pushed that turret, took that Lord with impunity, and four members of Hawk on the way out. Sanford just picked up his plate of despair. I know. Yikes. This guy is gonna do damage now. I mean, he has Athena show early game, but now it's all about that one shot backline, the one shot Eudora. Let's give that. Here comes the push. Lola defensively using Min. the Pierce Dive. That's Min melted down. That's oh. Yaoi getting the Tyrant Rage Flicker. Lola trying to do the best he can. Gary once again in desperation goes in, but it's Benny who smacks them, slices them with a Ooh. triple kill and a wipeout to secure match points. I can hear all the Echo fans, Limang Echo fans shouting, go for the throat. It's match point for the Filipino runner-ups of MPL Philippines Season 10. Dave, what's going on? Game one was so close. This, this, <sighs> Min was, was overloaded, as you mentioned. I mean, they pick a lot of characters. The, the thinking they were trying to pick the meta character, the counter picks, but it seemed like they drafted themselves into a corner, right? Because they're known for a certain play style, and this game, they're making a 180-degree switch.